Alright guys, we had a uh, discussion over on Patreon and the question was asked in one of the videos as to what my thoughts were for uh, closed fist strikes versus open palm strikes. And uh, really this to me comes down to a matter of application, uh, comes down to a matter of individual, um, even to a certain degree a matter of context, the environment that you're planning on using this in. Just to give you a little bit of uh, an understanding of, of where this is all coming from, I understand that many styles out there use open hand strikes, but pretty much every style for the last several centuries have utilized closed hand strikes as their primary means of delivering uh, a strike on an opponent. The open hand strike really kind of came into, into mainstream view when when the military law enforcement side of the house really started to adopt these things and understand that the perspective through which that they are looking at things through is through a military use. So for instance, I go into a room, I'm clearing a room, I've got other guys behind me, the need for me to develop or to, uh, to possess a, an immediately incapacitating strike is less important in that context because I've got other guys that are going in with me. In addition to that, from the military side of the house, you also have guys who you are automatically assuming are going to be wearing body armor. Taking and, and firing a full force uh, closed fist punch and somebody dropping and you firing into their helmet is going to cause major problems for your hand. However, all of this is great for military combatives, and I don't disagree with, with their use in that particular context at all. But understand that when a lot of these combatives programs get filtered down into the civilian side of the house, into the, the average everyday guy who's just defending his family, the cool guy factor starts to fit in, and Ranger Recon 6, Ninja, you know, Force Guy, comes in and says, okay, well, this is how you do it, and the reason is because you don't want to break your hand. Or, my favorite, you don't want to break your wrist. Uh, so we're going to look at a couple of those things. We're going to look at those from an engineering perspective. All right, what is it, what are the benefits, the pros and the cons for each, and then how does that translate into a real-world environment for the average civilian to be able to deliver strikes? So... First thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at force, the amount of force that's generated. So we're just going to have some assumptions here just because everybody's fist size is different. Everybody throws punches at different strengths and, and depending on how you throw, um, all of those things vary. So just to compare apples to apples, we're going to go ahead and use some assumed values. So we look at an individual who fires a, a punch at a hundred pounds of force, all right? So the amount of force that is delivered on that punch is now delivered typically between three knuckles. I know most martial arts styles will tell you that you're actually going to cant your wrist slightly and you're going to deliver it through the two primary. However, most people don't and that's not how it usually ends up panning out. So let's just say you know, it delivers into these three knuckles. So we're going to take an area that's roughly two to three inches by one inch and divide that hundred pounds of force. So We'll just go on the larger side and say three square inches. So that gives us 33 pounds of force per square inch for a closed fist punch. Now you're going to do that same punch, but you're going to do it with a palm heel strike. So it's going to be open palm and you're delivering that strike. The area is significantly larger through which that, that uh, blow gets delivered. So if we take that same area, and we have roughly, let's just say, three inches across by two inches. Now we've got six square inches of area through which that same amount of force is delivered. That comes out to about 17 pounds per square inch. So the idea is, in, and anybody who's ever had to endure open hand strikes versus closed hand strikes clearly can feel the difference. All right, it's, it's not... It's not a minor difference. I understand some guys throw harder than others, but the idea is, is that there is a clear difference between that close hand strike and that open hand strike. So, keeping that in context, we can fire with a greater amount of force. However, 
both of these have to be fired with a certain amount of technique. So when I fire a closed punch, if I'm firing in this manner, where my knuckles are up above my wrist line, then I run into some issues. However, when I rotate down and I get those knuckles directly in line, that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for that force to be generated from my body through that radial bone all the way in through my wrist and into the, the fist to transfer that amount of force. By the same token, the same thing gets considered with the palm. However, in order to get that palm heel directly in line with that radial bone, you have to lock that wrist back almost completely 90 degrees. Now I understand that some people fire from this direction. However, what you're going to get in that type of scenario is you're going to get a glancing blow. So just to compare the same amount of force with the same amount of force, both hitting with a square impact, a square solid impact, you're going to have to actually deliver that palm heel strike from here. All right. So the first thing that we want to cover is we want to cover the application that these are used. All right. In a civilian context where you're walking out to a vehicle and some guy is being uh, obnoxious and decides to grab a hold of your wife and you decide to just haul off and hit it, am I going to use an open hand or a closed hand punch on that in that uh, type of scenario? Again, goes back to the amount of force that I can, I can generate and how concisely I can actually focus that force in on my target because the amount of the degree to which I can focus that force in is going to determine the amount of damage that I can do. So I can take a hundred pounds of force and deliver it all over this guy's face or I can take a hundred pounds of force and deliver it right to the mandible, right to the jawbone there. Which do you think is going to do the greatest amount of damage? If I'm looking to knock this guy out, I'm looking to get that nerve right behind there, Delivering that in a more focused manner is going to give me the greatest amount of force. All right. So the application is going to be obviously important on how this is delivered. So if I'm delivering this in the scenario of a uh, SWAT team, or probably not a SWAT team, probably a uh, probably a military application where I'm meeting. Uh, you know, one military force against another military force and I go in and I meet these guys and these guys are kitted up and I'm kitted up and I go to throw a blow. No, I'm not going to throw closed fist strikes against somebody who is who is potentially wearing body armor and helmet and gear and maybe gas masks, things like this. That that would not be a smart move for me. So for that purpose I would use an open hand strike. But the open hand strike is not used as a means to completely incapacitate or to do the greatest amount of damage per se uh, when I deliver it, it is used as a diversionary measure for me to be able to access my tools. So going back to some of the stuff that we do in retention where I go and I fire that strike, open hand even, I'm using it as a diversionary method to be able to access my tools and be able to go to work with my tools. This is just a distraction for what I'm looking for next which is actually utilizing my pistol. However, there's nothing that says that I can't fire this from an actual closed fisted punch and still be able to do that. However, the downside is is that this is a smaller area and my since my intent is to fire that that blow as a distraction, I use an open hand to give me the greatest possible chance of making impact and creating that distraction. So you understand the difference in application and how it's used. One is used to incapacitate, that's the purpose. The other one is used for distraction in order to utilize my tools. One is used in the context of focusing that energy. The other one is used to minimize the amount of possibility of the individual moving out of the way of that distraction. So think about it in that context. All right, so the next thing is we're taking this 33 pounds of force, we're taking this 17 pounds of force here, and we're looking at something what's called deflection. Now, deflection, when you're looking at this, let's just say in engineering terms, deflection would be, I have a column here, and I have a beam, and when I load that beam, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a force that actually causes that beam to drop. 
and that the amount to which that drops is what is termed deflection. Where you have that same principle involved in your punches. Because you have soft, meaty areas in, your, in the palm of your hand, when I hit, there's going to be a certain amount of give. Try and think about it from the perspective of punching somebody in a bare knuckle brawl versus punching somebody with boxing gloves on. Keeping in mind that, mat, that the mass of your hand is going to change, but just understand the principle, the, the amount of give that's given in the cushion does make, an in, make a difference in the amount of force that's generated. So this 17 pounds of force is actually going to be reduced by, let's just say we drop it 2 pounds, so we're down to 15 now. So deflection becomes an issue versus a closed fist one of the things that you notice with a closed fist is that when it's closed properly and it's tight, you, there's almost no give. You have a solid, firm surface that has got zero deflection for all intents and purposes. Because all the bones line up against other bones, there's no deflection there. As opposed to the palm heel strike, which you can line up all the bones and that's fine, but there's always going to be that meaty cushion in the front that is going to give you a certain degree of deflection. So that's going to create a reduction in the amount of force that you can apply on that strike. The next thing, probably my favorite and the most ridiculous in my opinion, is the broken wrist argument. Alright, let's look at this. When you're performing disarms, one of the things, one of the very uh, elementary principles that you learn is that if if an individual is holding on to a knife or a gun and that wrist is straight, his grip is strong. If I can break that 90 degrees, once I get that 90 degrees, that grip goes to almost nothing. Now this is important because you've all heard the analogy about a single twig being strong, but a bundle of, or a single twig being weak, but a bundle of twigs being strong. I would even add another caveat onto that and say that a bundle of twigs that is bound extremely tightly is going to be that much stronger than even a bundle of twigs that is bound loosely. So by closing my fist in good and hard and solid and getting all of those bones lined up all the way down that radial bone and into my arm, into my shoulder, and that all of that force is generated from my body and transferred down into that two to three square inch area. By doing that and by keeping my, my fist gripped tightly, what I do is I strengthen my wrist. So the idea that you're going to break your wrist as a result of closed fist punch is actually ridiculous. It's, it's actually counterintuitive. An open hand strike, you are far more likely to break the wrist because you, because you don't have the grip, you are no longer taking advantage of that ability to strengthen the, the bones in your wrist. So if I hit a glancing blow, for instance I'm hitting a target and I hit a glancing blow and happen to hit just slightly too high, I'm far more likely to break my wrist. I'm also far more likely even if I hit square and I hit on a solid surface to do some damage to the, the muscles and tendons in my hand. But that becomes another issue. So the idea of application is directly relevant to the question. From a civilian perspective, my opinion is closed fist strikes are going to do the best unless I am accessing another tool and I want to take advantage of the ability to create a larger square surface to minimize my chance of missing. Deflection. Deflection is an issue. Okay, I don't care how you cut it, this is just purely a matter of engineering. Bundling that fist up tightly Minimizing that area, I'm going to have less deflection because the surface hardness of my hand is that much harder. There is less give than with a wrist that is cocked back 90 degrees. Broken wrist. There is absolutely not one case that I am aware of of an individual with a closed fist, a tightly closed fist, breaking his wrist. Possibly breaking knuckles, possibly bre breaking fingers. But again, we're comparing one blow to another based on both blows being delivered properly. You cannot account for broken wrists if an individual limp wrists his punch or even broken fingers for that matter if an individual doesn't close tightly or maybe tucks his thumb to the inside. We're talking about cases where both strikes are delivered 
both using proper technique, which one is going to give you the best chance of, of delivering a more lethal blow, or uh, probably lethal is not really the term, but you understand what I'm saying, um, deliver the best, the most amount of force in the smallest amount of area, concentrating that force and doing the most damage, versus the open hand strike, which delivers a larger area, um, but it's a more muted blow. So those are my thoughts on open hand versus uh, closed fist strikes. You guys can uh, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on that.